The Marvel is a movie that people look forward to seeing. Seeing it flop, hey yo! And one of the sad things that I actually hope it's gonna be a good movie. Why? Three continuous flop? But suddenly, a good movie actually came out. It kind of make people interesting again, maybe. If it succeed, it will change people's opinion on the current MCU. Maybe there are hope. Maybe there is a chance that the MCU can make good movie again. But if it flop, then it would just be another confirmation that people need to not be interesting in Marvel anymore. And sadly, just like the rumor, it is a flop. But personally, I think not only it is a flop, but it more of a missed opportunity of a movie. Because there are a lot of ways you can make this movie a good one. Which is why I want to talk about that in this video. I will go through some of my opinion on how the movie can be fixed. So there's gonna be spoiler as a warning. So first of all, the character. Generally, all the characters are underdeveloped and was not able to bring out their full potential. Miss Marvel is the most confusing one of all because I believe that the general idea is that not many people watch her show because they don't really have a reason to do so. And it is understandable, which is why I think the movie should try to tackle this problem instead of, oh, well, you can just go and watch our show. Like, no, you give us no reason to watch. And this movie just proved that, yeah, that there's nothing interesting about the character. If the movie did well, it will funnel into our show. If people saw that these characters are somewhat interesting, they might want to look into the character more. It's like making Iron Man in the Avenger interesting. And then people will want to watch Iron Man 1. Movie watcher don't always work in order. I think it's just you have to put in everything trying to make a character appealing and interesting in all the movie. And not just because they, they are there and they, they have on their own show. I don't know, I never watched any of the Marvel show, but it's too long in my opinion. I have been too familiar with the 2 hour, 3 hour movie. But... You have to watch like 8 hour of movie, it's just not fun. Anyway, back to Miss Marvel. As I did not watch the show, so I don't really know how her power works. I thought that the wristband that she wear give her power. But when she lost it, she can still use her power. So why does she even need it in the first place? And having two wristbands doesn't do anything, even though the villain wear two of them. And her body got destroyed. But Miss Marvel does it and nothing happened. Like, yeah, sure. They throw in the legendary line as if I was made for this. Like, bro, it doesn't make sense. As for the acting, the teen fangirl energy is not for me. It's a bit annoying. Like the scene in her living room where she climaxed to the fact that Captain Marvel was in her house. It feel weird. <laughs> I, the Black Lightning chick is also another character that I don't really care. She is a character that you know, related to Captain Marvel, so they have to give her something. Nick Fury got turned into a clown, so they're that. But to be honest, there's not much that he can do in the movie. And I did not watch the show either. The villain is the worst part of the movie. Uninteresting and quite the stupid one. The villain goal is to restore her planet and get her revenge on Captain Marvel by stealing resources from other planets that Captain Marvel have emotional attachment to. First of all, that's kind of stupid. Why not take from other planets first? You can have the resource to plan out your revenge. Captain Marvel probably don't really know which random planet you're gonna target. So you have a high chance of getting away with stealing other planet resource, right? And then you can build on an army that can actually fight against Captain Marvel. You can take revenge on her. But yeah, the villain is very badly written in this movie, which is we consider the villain is a woman. I thought she would be a strong and independent woman. 
Well, independent, yes, strong, not so much. Throughout the movie, she always have her male minion with her. But suddenly, the final scene, the most important battle, she is alone. Not a single man in sight, just as intended. On the strength side, she is not exactly strong either, wearing two of the Miss Marvel wristband nearly kill her and when she used it, she died. And what was it that the purpose of her sacrifice is very meaningless. She used the wristband to open a portal to another dimension. But what for? Really, there is no danger to it. It's not like the moment she opened the portal, an army will come to like one in Avenger. So when she sacrificed her life to open a portal with no minion around, so the hero can just take their time to think up a solution. And a lot of people have pointed out about this, why the opening a portal from another dimension affect the sun, like bruh. Yeah, it's just really badly written throughout the movie, the plot, the character, everything. And then we come to the final character, the most important one, Captain Marvel. She is pretty okay, but I think she is limited by other character because Captain Marvel kind of like, you know, she can do everything, she's strong, which is why I think the best way is to let her play around with auto character, maybe help auto character or revolt you know the people who she care about to kind of elevate the Captain Marvel more. However, I do think that she could have a character that moment where they kill up a character because I think everyone hates her or just don't really care about Captain Marvel in general. But of course, it is to the actress and the writer to decide. Bro, how can someone be so strong to the point where they can literally ignite a dying sun and walk out like nothing happened? That's just stupid. Even Thor, a god, had a hard time doing something similar. But Captain Marvel, no, she had woman power. Therefore, she is stronger. Yeah, it just everything in this movie is a jumbo mess of non-consistent character and an interesting plot. But yeah, now let's come to the fixes of the character have been called as uninteresting to care about before the movie and during it. So if you cannot make the character interesting before, at least try to do it after. Miss Marvel power could be introduced better especially when it related to the final outcome of the story. The black and white girl can really fuck off because I don't really know what they're gonna do with her. And we already know about Captain Marvel's ability and her plot shield. So how can we introduce Miss Marvel better? Well, the part where they found out that the villain have one just like her. And it is that point where you can talk more in depth about the superpower, the power that the wristband give her, does Miss Marvel need the wristband to have her power? Because the wristband do give the villain power. I don't really watch the show, which is why I think when I first saw it, I think, okay, so the wristband is what give Miss Marvel her power. But in the end, she lost her wristband, she still can use her power. Yeah, I don't, I don't really know. And the way that they introduce her on how she get her power. It's just so lame. Oh, my grandma married to me. It's so uninteresting. One wristband got mail, and the order is across the universe. After hearing that, make me fall with my mouth. All of the characters have extremely boring way of getting their power. One got to the mail. One got just by walking to some place. I forgot how Captain Marvel get her, but. I would assume it would be pretty easy. The fight scene is the only okay part. The mechanic of the switch is very confusing, but it can be ignored. What cannot be ignored is that the training montage. So they have a montage of getting used to the power, the switch, but they don't really train on how to use it in fighting. And the evidence show 
in their first fight against the villain using the switch and they have kind of like confused and they have a little bit messy of a fight but then on the second fight they somehow execute everything perfectly nah that's just not logical bro the first fight have two people switching the second one have all three which is very hard to believe that they could pull that off on the second fight it's like juggling with two objects is easy but you add one more and it became extremely difficult which is why i got a little bit mad but you know if they can just show that the first fight all three are somewhat a bit clumsy they try to get used to it and because of that the villain managed to get away and she able to capture miss marvel to use her for the final goal like the villain could maybe manage to attach a bomb to miss marvel neck and if she don't come with them her family will die why remember the space station yeah i don't either the whole incident is a joke but instead of that how about making it seem like an actual dangerous situation because of the space station is maybe in the way of the villain go she ordered her troop to infiltrate the space station through the portal that she opened something like that right and capture the one who have the authority to shut the space station down aka nick fury and who is with him miss marvel family this means that miss marvel have to go with the villain and she cannot switch place with the other because if she too far from the villain the bomb will explode this way the villain can use miss marvel without the cost of her own life but what this nick fury is actually a badass that managed to escape and inform captain marvel about the plan the whole another dimension is kind of like they just want to introduce the x-men which is another stupid thing but a good reason to do so is maybe they could open the portal to another dimension to their own planet where the ai is still alive and so they can have a copy of that ai to bring back to their home planet on this universe and it would make more sense right on why she would want to open another portal to another dimension overall the order of event is something like this discover the switch rescue the goblin i actually forgot how any detail about that part i think it is so uninteresting on that part to the point where i ignore it but well i guess we just have to ignore that the training montage the singing planet the singing planet is just a stupid concept like you technically speak the same language but one have to sing so technically the translator is like an auto tune but it's just stupid to be honest anyway the fight scene but miss marvel got captured at the same time on the nick fury space station the villain minion invade and capture nick fury with miss marvel family as captain marvel tried to get back to earth the villain opened the portal to get to earth and get the sun which means that captain marvel have a limited time to go to the villain planet and restore the sun meanwhile the villain plan to use both of the wristband to open the portal to another dimension to get the ai miss marvel have to choose to save her family so she agreed to open the portal but instead of putting both wristband on one person miss marvel and the villain both wear one and then combine their power to open the portal like really you can make stuff up because let me honestly no one know about the power the wristband and all that stuff so you can literally make stuff up at that time nick fury managed to escape by his awesomeness and then signal the exact location to captain marvel as miss marvel opened the portal captain marvel and the other girl show up the villain and hero then talk to each other because if they fight miss marvel family die so this is the conversation about how captain marvel can save the sun but then surprise nick fury come to rescue and the family is saved and so the three fight the fight can just end like in the movie so the villain somehow managed to snatch the miss marvel wristband and then sacrifice herself then the signal to call for help 
to the AI started maybe with a timer maybe with like the minion the male minion who is close to her maybe try to do something right stuff like that and then the hero actually try to figure out on how to close the portal and because Miss Marvel don't really know how to close it she's new to the power but then the black girl think that she can close the portal from the other side but Captain Marvel and Miss Marvel have to constantly give her power to close it. This eliminates the stupid sacrifice scene in the movie because all Captain Marvel have to do is wait right next to her to pull her over in the movie. Like that's just stupid. I don't know how, what was they thinking doing that scene. But yeah, so the portal is still closing but then the black girl have to stay on the other side to make sure it closed which make the ending would stay the same and yeah that is the physical part of the movie now we come to the emotional one there is a part that you can explore is that Captain Marvel want to be alone because even though she is the strongest hero she cannot really save the important people in her life or just the important people that is around her her best friend, Iron Man, those goblin people the father go out for meal isn't really ideal for her. This would make the black girl understand her fear, understand why Captain Marvel don't want to be near her because she's afraid that, you know, she could get in danger and all that stuff. And Miss Marvel could get a reality check is another part that I could see. So the way I see it is Miss Marvel is basically Spider-Man, like girl version Spider-Man. You can make her grow up as a character in a way of Captain Marvel deny her everything. She want to save other people but Captain Marvel shut her down. She want to be friend with Captain Marvel get denied. She want to fight crime with Captain Marvel but Captain Marvel hit her with the reality is that being superhero isn't supposed to be fun. It is lonely and there are times that you wish you don't have this power and someone could take your place and all that stuff, right? You're afraid that all the people who are near you will get hurt. Like I said, I don't really think it is a better version, but it is something that you can explore into and try to make it out because I just based on how Spider-Man is work, right? He got hit with all these new things and he have to realize that he have to grow up, he have to be more mature. But in this movie, they don't really do that. And so by doing this situation, Miss Marvel character can grow into a more serious one. Captain Marvel can die if choose so, sacrifice herself to restore the sun because the sun on Earth is dying. So she don't really have any other option. Or she can just live and be stronger and accept that the only thing that she can do is keep saving people and letting Miss Marvel into her life, training her and all that stuff, having all the moments. All the things I said in this video is just my opinion. It's not like I'm the better version of it. I mean, it could be. I wouldn't lie. But it's just stuff that is in my head, stuff that I think of how the movie could be. But it, it is in my opinion. So feel free to give your opinion in the comment. Do you have better ID? Feel free to share it too. It is just sad that if you take a look at the Marvel, it can be a simple movie, but an interesting one. If they manage to have a good script, combine it with the current state of the MCU after three continuous flops, the Marvel could be a, a chain in some way for the MCU. If it can just meet the minimum requirement but we already see how it go and well it is what it is and yeah that's it for this video thank you for watching and subscribe see you next one goodbye